Hi, I'm Ken Gillingham, I'm an associate professor at Yale, and I'm starting my five-minute short talk for the AFE conference. This isn't quite as much fun as actually uh, going to the conference and presenting, but it'll have to do under these circumstances. This is a field experimental paper on the value of distributed solar with co-authors Martin Overe and Brian Bollinger. Uh, they both deserve uh, substantial credit for what we're doing. This uh, project is motivated by a really hot topic right now in, um, throughout policy, throughout the policy world um, in many states around the country. It's about the value of distributed solar fed into the grid. So we're talking about rooftop solar, either commercial or residential, usually residential we're talking about. And this is a hugely contentious topic. There's a major debate about replacing net metering with something else. So net metering means that when you put on rooftop solar on your house, if you don't use the electricity, say you're at work or away, that electricity that's generated is fed back into the grid, and net metering means that you're uh, compensated at the retail rate, so that basically your meter runs backwards. Uh, this has, is such a top, hot topic and hot debate because many places are talking about replacing it with something more close to the social value of generation to the electricity system with the argument that the retail rate in many cases is too high, in many cases, in most cases, it's way above the wholesale rate. So what is that value? Now one of the key aspects to understanding that value is understanding if you put solar on the grid, how does it actually influence the, um, how does it influence the distribution system around it? One might think that it might have a negative impact on the distribution system because it's harder to manage the distribution system. It's harder to, you know, deal with the intermittency from solar generation when a cloud comes over and solar generation drops. That has to be dealt with, with the, in the grid. This study runs a field experiment at the feeder level. We run solar campaigns in a treatment feeder. Uh, in treatment feeders leading to higher levels of adoption of residential rooftop solar. We follow grid metrics after the campaigns to see how the electric distribution grid is affected. Uh, 10 campaigns were, were run and there were 10 controls. These are pretty expensive campaigns and that explains the relatively small sample size. Now what is a feeder? So you see on the right bottom right there, that's an example feeder uh, in Manchester, uh, Connecticut. A feeder has you know a few hundred households is a general way to think about it. Uh, the campaigns were run just like those in a recent, uh, forthcoming uh, management science paper by myself and Brian Bollinger, and they have uh, requests for proposals for the chosen installer, events, voluntary, so, volunteer solar ambassadors really promote everything, this group pricing, and this focus marketing. The campaigns worked. The average number of installations increased over the control. You know, the statistical significance is uh, not maybe what we would ideally want. We have a p-value of 0.02 p-value of 0.03, but given a small sample size, which was restricted based on the cost of running these, um, this is pretty good. We were pretty happy. Uh, so there was an increase in installations during these feeder level campaigns, which was pretty significant to us because it's a little harder to run feeder level campaigns than, say, town level campaigns, which is what we had been running in previous work, such as that management science paper. The data used in this analysis include administrative data on all solar installations, as well as utility data on a whole set of different grid metrics that are really important for the cost of, of upgrading and maintaining the uh, utility uh, distribution system. Our main results are that rooftop solar can indeed provide benefits. So an additional kilowatt hour of distributed solar decreases the maximum feeder load by 0.24 kilowatts and decreases the duration of interruptions by an average three to four minutes and decreases the frequency of interruptions by three to five percent. So this is actually quite significant. Why is it important? It's important because much of the discussion has been about how adding solar to the grid can cause, can lead to all sorts of trouble to the distribution grid. Um, but here we're finding it actually improves a whole set of grid metrics. Basically what's going on is uh, solar is cutting some of the peak load and that is very useful. So during the peak time when, the, when everyone's running everything, solar also happens to be running. Uh, and that's what we see in the data over the past several years. Um, and it also reduces uh, interruptions basically just because there happens to be more 
electricity on that grid uh, during that time, which makes it a little less likely to, to go down. There are some caveats, though. These are results on the margin. These were congested feeders that we chose. Both the control and treatment, which were randomized, uh, were pre-matched. Um, they may not hold more broadly. There may be other feeders where this isn't the case. Uh, we're also working to obtain further data on from one of the two major utilities to allow us to more really completely fill out the story. And we're still working on drafting our paper, but we uh, appreciate any comments and uh, thanks for the opportunity.